Welcome listeners to another episode of our podcast. Today we have privilege of hosting Andrew, an esteemed investor and investing a professional private investor. With impressive nine years of experience in investing uh, field, I we would like to know more about Andrew, what is his experience, why he is starting his own venture and why he is using this field and what kind of problem he is solving right now in the market. So back to you, Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much for uh, you have taking the time over here. And um, please brief me about your career, your education, and your journey. Sarah, thank you for um, for inviting me to to talk. I know we connected a a, a few months ago, and the timing wasn't right. So it, it's great that we reconnected to to make this happen. Um, yeah, you know, briefly on myself. So I've been investing for the last the last decade. So. Um, I finished my master's degree in in politics of all things um, in 2014, um, and and quickly moved into the investing world, um, doing some internships in you know one or two hedge funds. Um, I, I worked then in equity research, um, probably the largest institution, um, <laughs> God rest its soul, that I worked at was 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 the late Credit Swiss. Um, so I was there for about four or five years, um, doing a combination of research. Uh, um, and then also working on the trading floor. Um, so I've had a range of experiences um, uh, across financial services, but one thing that's been consistent um, has been, um, you know, a focus on investing as an as an analyst. Um, if people, if my uh, the cocktail party say, Andrew, what do you do? I say, I'm an investment analyst. Um, so I think that's in, in my blood and you know part of part of who I am. Um, and then secondly, um, this focus on financial services. So I've always gravitated towards um, analysis of banks or asset managers or diversified financials. Um, really is a sector that's so often misunderstood. It, it's, uh, it's, it's so important. It's 30% of the index in the UK on the equity side, more from a fixed income and credit perspective. Um, but it's little often, it, it, it's poorly understood. Um, investors are t- intimidated by the interest rate context, the macro context, and certainly the regulatory context. Um, so, so that's always been in, an area of focus in the last decade for me. So, I would like to know more about what inspired you to pursue a career in investing areas. Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, when I did my my master's degree, so I did my undergrad at, at Oxford um, in history and English of all things, and then the master's in international relations, so politics. Um, I thought I wanted to be an academic, um, and I basically changed my mind, and I came across the, as so many people do, the Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, um, some of the um, kind of notable activist investors um, at the time as well, um, who were kind of making waves in in mainly corporate America, um, and I just found it inspiring. There was something um, about investing in a way like academia. I always say when I'm talking to people, investing, for me anyway, is you're basically trying to predict the future, and the portfolio that you build of stocks or bonds or whatever it may be is simply the framework through which you express your view of what's going to happen next. Um, you know, the, the phrase would be, if if I knew what was going to happen tomorrow, I'd be a billionaire because you just build a portfolio of securities to express that view. So I was always attracted to that view that the day-to-day life of an analyst is just trying to figure out what happens next. And you just build a set of tools in order to do that. So some of those are clearly mathematical, economic, um, but some might also be psychological, um, historical analysis. When a CEO goes into a room and says, we're going to produce earnings of X in um, X years, they're basically telling you a story. People always said to me, how can you study English literature um, and go into investing? But in a sense, um, forecasting or taking a view on on stocks or whatever is is a form of storytelling. Um, So... For me, it was that obvious choice, and it, it allows you to have that that intellectual focus. And you know, final point is, so many of the rules of investing are rules for life. Um, you know, be brave when other people are fearful. Um, you know, never never waste a good crisis. You know, there are so many of these truisms um, that apply to investing, which which uh, are also lessons for life. So so that inspires me. Uh, you know, every day to do this this job. Mm. 
same things happened to me, Andrew. Um, when I once started my functional consultancy and doing the uh, forecasting, the so same goes yeah. happened to me. This client is telling us the story. Okay, they are going to build their own venture. They are going to build their own startup. And what the numbers we can easily predict as per the current situation. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. This is a very mild, uh, you can say we love it, our work. That's why we are helping our clients very well. We know that yeah. what their pain is. And then we are coming with the solution and they are, we are predicting the future with the current scenarios. Okay, what are the current scenarios? What are the, your current budget? What is your current situation? And then we are making, making up the whole, you can say for doing the forecasting and giving the actual budget so you can, they can implement yeah. into the company. It's, it's same goes for the investment purpose as well. Uh, investors exactly. are looking for the investment. Yeah, yeah. So what, what do you think that investors and starters when come into the one table, they are looking for the forecast. So here now we are, that we are helping them out. Okay, this is your current situation and giving you the forecast ability with the help of the current scenarios. Yes, perfect. So I love your work, Andrew. Believe me, and it will help more startups as well. So move forward. Uh, what was it like um, moving from a small equity research platform as an analyst mm -hmm. to large investment banks like RBSC and Credit Suisse? So what is your experience over the years as well? So, um... So I, I've I've not got any kind of um you know really had any family or friends historically in investing so it's it's quite a strange and intimidating world to to go into you know when you go into kind of the towers in Canary Wharf and you know the big skyscrapers in London um and you know you read and and watch movies about about investing and you know these terrifying hedge fund managers etc cetera, etc cetera. so um. It was all, in a sense, new to me. Um, I think what in, what was interesting going to a large organization in particular um, and a large investment bank, as you say, such as an RBC or Credit Suisse, was the different risk profiles and an, and approaches of of one analyst or one investor from another. So, you know, I'll give you an example. When I kind of went into investing, as I say, I'd been reading Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Monish Parbright, these kind of very traditional long-term value investors. I mean, had a, who, who in a sense have become the investment orthodoxy, but certainly had a specific way of thinking about markets. Um, and what was interesting to me was that I could walk into a room with an analyst or fund manager who, say, spent 30 years covering 10 stocks but had no interest in investing in those personally. Um, you know, they'd be happy to collect a salary every day, talk about the companies all day on the phone to investors, but never necessarily invest. And sometimes out of compliance reasons, the bank doesn't, don't want you to invest in companies you're recommending, et cetera. Um, but I found that fascinating. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you'd have in another meeting an investor who would invest 50% or more of their net worth in um, in one stock um, at a given point of time. So throwing the, all the literature about diversification out of the window because they had such high conviction and a certain risk tolerance or tolerance for volatility. So that was fascinating to me, that spectrum, um, that two individuals would say, yes, I'm an investor, I'm an analyst, but their approach and their risk tolerance was entirely different. For me, I'd probably say maybe not 50% of net worth in one stock, um, but I think I'm definitely towards that end of more concentrated, high conviction style of investing. Um, and as you'll know with your clients, um, they are essentially, when they start their own businesses, investing more, you know, 100% in many cases of their net worth in one idea, which is the company they own. Um, so in that sense, um, that type of concentration, risk, appetite, that startup culture is 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 very normal. Um, but there are people in the investment world who would look at that with with terror. So it, it really is a broad church, and and that was probably a key learning for me going into some of those bigger places.
I would like to add over here that I am also a financial consultant in my family, just one. My whole family, right. either they are engineers, yeah. either they are do uh, doctors, <laughs> and they are very scared. What are you doing, Sadaf, with your life? <laughs> no, exactly. I, it's funny you say that. My mom always says mm. to me, because I'm always straight, she's a, 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 a lawyer, a family lawyer by training. Mm. And whenever, you know, have a good trade, I'll, I'll call her up and say, oh, I made this amount of money today, stop, stop. 20% mm -hmm. she's like oh but, but what happens now and did you sell it and do you do you leave it and she's always like I think it's gambling but um but yeah it, it's a it's quite a strange thing explaining to family mm -hmm. members what you do strange, if totally if strange for your family yeah you're just exactly. like a black sheep in your family yeah. and people <laughs> don't know what you are doing but you are you can't try to explain it very well because you are very good in numbers and we can easily predict the numbers and believe yeah. me i'm not yeah. uh, i'm not happy to write anything but i'm very happy to write any financial analysis report because i know what i'm doing you know so this I is a, uh, this is the things i think <laughs> it happens when you are just only one in your family who is a different mm -hmm. to me and you mm. are in a different, uh, the whole family is in the same domain. Um, mm. My second question is that, Andrew, that you mentioned that you're currently building your own investment research business. And uh, can you share more about your this transition and your vision of the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, as I mentioned to you ahead of the school, we, we actually we launched the website yesterday. So it's been a, it's been a busy three-month process of um of of so many things from a professional sense um but we we basically started business in in february um so the business is called fighting financials limited we're we're based in we're, we're kind of domiciled in in the uk um in the last month we've um we've obtained um our regulatory approvals um for for the financial from the financial conduct authority so so that's a big deal. Um, that means we're 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 effectively authorised to to give regulated investment advice. Um, um, so that's great. So so that allows us to take on institutional clients. Um, but as I say, the business is called Fighting Financials. You can you can you can visit us at fightingfinancials.com online. Um, and it's a very simple business. Um, we the, the mission of the business is to be the partner of choice for the professional financial services investor. So what we do is um, provide an online platform primarily of interesting, high conviction, differentiated investment ideas. Um, it's split across equities and credit. Um, the core focus, though, is financial. So. For example, um, if you become a subscriber or a client, you'll go onto the portal, log on, um, pick up the phone and have a call with me and the rest of the team, and it will be buy Barclays shares, sell HSBC 81 credit, for example. Interestingly, about 70% of the ideas on the platform today um, have basically one or zero in terms of broker coverage. So we're really, it's not necessarily, you know, we have a few of the big name stocks that we really like that, you know, five analysts would cover, but it really is looking for these interesting pockets in the market um, that most people just wouldn't look at. Or given that it's financial services, a lot of people would be afraid um, or intimidated by. So, so that's it. That's what the platform is, research for now. But really the strand is helping investors um, to to navigate um, the investment landscape with a particular focus on on financial services. It's really nice to know about your venture, and I would like to see if you require any kind of uh, you can say help or assistance from me and from my team. I Thank will you. be ready for you. So no, best that. of luck for your Thank for you. your startup. And uh, now, how has becoming a new dad influenced your professional <laughs> life and priorities? <laughs> this is a very tough it's question. Not yeah it's um it's just been insane i mean it's a blessing um for sure um so my son max is about five and a half months now um the funny thing is a lot of people said to me and kind of going out and trying to build something on my own in terms of in terms of fighting financials um a number of people are like oh that's risky having a newborn this is and, so risky and, believe me this is so risky you have a you are a new dad you are uh, having a new but venture no, 
So I disagree. So my view, mm-hmm. and two people said mm-hmm. this to me. So my view is, in five years' time, when he's five, and God forbid, he has some siblings, and there are school fees to pay or activities or all that stuff, and I'm five years older and five years more tired. Um, I think it will be so much more risky five years from now to pursue um, an entrepreneurial venture. So. For me, in a, in a strange way, um, the knowledge of my son on his way uh, towards the end of last year was was actually a huge motivator for me. And it's that the sign of thing is, you know, I want to be that role model that, you know, five years today, daddy pursued his ambitions and, and his goals um, and, and something he believed in. So for me, he was actually part of the motivation to 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 take this this route and do something more entrepreneurial. But to your question, it's a lot of fun. Um, I I don't know if you have kids. I I, I highly recommend it. Uh, ultimately, family is um is is what matters. Um, so so it's been a lot of fun. It's a little bit exhausting. Um, my partner um is the essential component in um in allowing him to kind of have have a good life and and have a good time but he is he is a great he has a great time he's traveled a lot he's been back and forth to france a few times you probably hear him screaming in the background um but yeah it brings a, a smile to my face and it's a huge motivation so um so yeah we we feel blessed and um and we try to have a lot of fun with with parenthood i'm having three kids and you and uh the, ah, wow. okay the, the new one is just one years old and the elder, elder one older one is 10 years old so you know this is a huge gap of 10 10 years old and one year baby so yes this is a roller coaster three life a, and we believe nice me number. it's really a uh, life changing <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and uh, uh, the second one is eight years old baby girl Rebecca. So, so basically, um, kids is gave, giving you a space to to give you a break from your work. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we are so much indulged in our you know we my our work is very constantly time consuming and time taking mm. because our analysis is so much important for the third parties like our clients. So mm. we are so much indulged in our, our work, but our kids are giving us a break. Okay, let's come to the life back rather than just do the whole work work. So and uh, and fashion it is like you and me. We are very introvert kind of personality. We don't have a very huge social network. We we are very mm. into kind of by nature. It is our nature mm. because due to our work mm. situation. So this is the mm. thing. Uh, uh, best of luck. Uh, be a new dad. Thank and you. my all best wishes. Best good luck to yes. you and uh, being a, a third time mum with with <laughs> with a little army to to uh to uh, <laughs> marshal about. So no, I appreciate uh, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let's uh, back to the next question: Is what interesting trends are you currently seeing within markets, particularly uh, F FIG and Fins? And what advice do you think yeah. you are giving to your clients in this specific area? Yeah, yeah. great question. So, look, my, my financials market is really exciting at the moment. Um, I'm finding a lot to do. As I say, a lot of the things that, that we're looking at at Fighting Financials are um, a little bit quirky, a little bit niche, but, you know, sufficiently liquid. And, and you know, we see attractive return opportunities for you know, little or appropriate risk. So in terms of separating the the kind of the market out, I think higher level, um, a lot of the kind of high level views are, are on the platform. So I encourage you and you know your listeners to to go over and kind of see our high level views, which which are all effectively free. But what I'd say in in the portfolio today of, you know, nine or ten active recommendations currently, um the mm. credit ideas are the most um, I think the most compelling. So we have three to four active credit recommendations. Um, I mm. fixed income debt, so in a, in a sense, low risk, um, where we can get returns of about you know twelve, thirteen percent on average in sterling for um, a loan to value, if you like, of of sub thirty percent. Mm. So what I mean by that is you're being paid eleven or twelve percent a year. Um, in terms of return profile, and you are covered 
um, four to five times by the asset or the value of the business. Um, so, you know, for us, that's really exciting and interesting risk. Um, it is risk that is liquid. It's risk that a lot of investors are not looking at, um, whether it's the, the structure of the investment is a slightly quirky, slightly intimidating, um, or the security instrument is, is not necessarily traditional. But we also have a few of those in really traditional liquid three to 400 million bond investment where investors are just analyzing it in the wrong way mm. or confusing mm. the credit mm. story in a given situation from from the equity story. So credit's really interesting. Equity is good, um, but I think equity markets, certainly in financial services, are are quite highly valued. It's hard to see an obvious catalyst. So we we have about three recommendations on the equity side, long on the long side. Um, and it's really growth at reasonable prices. It's those financial services with some sort of brand value or network effect that means that like most, unlike most banks, they're not commodities. If you walk into HSBC, I think, or if I walk into mm. HSBC and they offer me a loan at 4% and Barclays offers me a loan at 3.99%, I'm going with Barclays. Um, these are commoditized products. So on the equity side, what we've found in the portfolio is built for some of those financials that have that brand data, um, that you use those brands and have a loyalty to them. And from an investment perspective, that means pricing power. That means long-term compounding. Um, so th those are kind of what, what we're seeing now in terms of opportunities. I think the one that's still difficult, particularly in a UK and European context, is short. Um, you know, we will be long 70% in the portfolio, 30% net short. But individual shorts, it's difficult um, because a lot of the broken business models are cheap already. Um, and that's, we're seeing a lot of kind of takeover activity um, in the UK. There was an offer for Hargreaves Lansdowne the other day that I think was rejected. A lot of people were short. The stock was up 20%. That's a painful situation to be in. Um, so I think shorts is the one where we're having to be really careful and thoughtful and creative. Um, but overall, yeah. Credit's really interesting, um, really great opportunity there to get double digit returns. Equity is going to be volatile, but, but, but we're, we're finding things to do. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's just about kind of cracking on. We're, we're nine to 10 in the portfolio today. Over the next few months, we'll go to 12, between, you know, 12 and 15 active recommendations. Um, and, and that'll be it. Then it will just be improving the portfolio over time, getting to know what clients are investing in as well. Um, and, you know, really targeting those kind of mid teens type of returns across the equity and credit portfolio. Before going for the investment as a fashionist, you also do the client persona analysis, right? What is a client persona? Either they are going for for the high volatility or they are going for the long-term investment or the short-term means there are several case scenarios we need to look into it and then come up with the solution okay which kind of portfolio which will be best suit according to the client needs yes but according to the new situation in the new uh, market mm -hmm. world after the ai integrations uh, i believe mm -hmm. that the clients uh, the investors are looking more into the less risk uh, factors and going for the long-term investment rather than short-term investment. Now, this is the current scenario. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, my last question is, is there anything else you would like to share with our listener about your journey or future plan and uh, tell about more about your platform, how they can easily subscribe, what is the minimum price range for the subscription and why it is benefit? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, so investors can, and, and you know, your your listeners can, and viewers can can go to fighting financials um, um, fightingfinancials dot com um, to see to see the website. Um, we basically have two offers. So so for now it's an early bird offer. So for the annual subscription it's five thousand. That gives you online access access to all of the research, um, any models we build, etc. Um, so I suppose we think of that as a as a high net worth um, professional investor um, uh, product. Um, and then on the early bird, um, we're offering that for online only. 
And then the full service is essentially all of that. So all of the online access, all of the access to, to the research and research archive and obviously any future um, ideas we come up with, but also access to myself and the team. So being able to pick up the phone and have a call or a video um, conversation like this so we can really dig deep into, into an investment opportunity. And currently that's 10000 for the year. Um, in in sterling um, uh, on an early bird basis so we're we're effectively saying to the first few who come to 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 join us on this journey um, we'll, we'll offer those kind of preferential preferential rates um, but even for those who aren't in that position at the moment you know we do offer quite a lot of um, of, of free materials and, and public articles on the website um, where we give a bit of that higher level view into to what we think is interesting and how we think investors, um, uh, whether individual investors or institutions, should think about the market. So hopefully there's something for everyone on the platform. Um, but yeah, fightingfinancials.com. And, um, you know, in terms of the outlook, we're excited. We think there's a lot to do. The, the world continues to be uncertain, continues to be exciting. Um, and for us, it's just about, um, you know, being that partner of choice to, to, to investors um, and, and helping them navigate navigate through that uncertainty, and and if we can do so and have a little bit of fun in the process, then then all the better. Better. Mm. Thank you so much. Let's wrap up the whole uh, podcast. And lately, it's a very insightful conversation with you regarding the investment field and for the investors and in startups, and uh, your expertise in investment landscape. I hope that you will have a very good uh, venture regarding the fighting financials. And- for that. Really appreciate it.